Hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here, and we are working with more fun Halloween things. As you can see, I am in the mood. And uh, so we are going to work on several projects today. It's going to all be a lot of fun. I need a little sip of tea because it's been a little dry in here today. <sighs> so we've got all kinds of Halloween projects. We've been working on them all week. We're going to work on some more today and we're gonna kind of cover a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is these galvanized pitchers. Now I have one all set up, foiled and everything else, but I figured I'd walk you through it from beginning to end so you know how to prep and prime these, and then we'll go forward from there. All right, so we're gonna scoot right on down here, and you can see it right here. Hey Terry, nice to see you with us. So the first thing you do, these come in, I got these at Target uh, for all of a whopping $5, um, which is maybe a little pricey for a galvanized aluminum. But the first thing I'm gonna do is take uh, my sandpaper, I think this is 220, yep, 220. Do a light sanding on the surface because I'm gonna put a paint color on there. So I wanna give a little tooth. I might even do the handle, I haven't decided yet. And then I'm gonna take some denatured alcohol. Now normally you've seen me with my spray bottle. God only knows where that went today. Um, I've been looking for it all day and I have yet to uncover it. So it's, it's buried somewhere here in the studio. It'll resurface eventually. So I'm just putting a little denatured alcohol on um, cheesecloth and giving it a little wipe down. Oh gosh, you guys are so cute. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you, Terry. Nice to see you here. You guys are so cute. I'm happy to have you here. All right, so uh, I'm giving it a wipe down because a uh, couple things. A, these have been handled. So people's hand oils are all over them. And what you see me scrubbing is there's a little bit of adhesive on here. Alcohol is generally pretty good at softening the uh, adhesive. I then scrape it with my fingernail and come back and wipe off any residue. Um, so it's been handled, it's got hand oils, but also there's manufacturing greases and handling on here. And I just don't wanna take the chance of having anything interfere with my bond so I make sure I wipe not only do I sand it but I wipe it down and if you look at my cheesecloth that's not clean so when I sand it I also sand it off a little bit of aluminum so I want to get all the medical med medical metal particles off of there all right so this one that we've already painted and put adhesive on we painted with set coat in what color is this charcoal Bovex set coat and charcoal um, comes in smaller sizes than gallons. You don't have to have the gallon. I just happen to have a gallon because I go through a lot of paint. So I'm going to push the can over there so you can see me doing this. And I'm just putting on a single coat. I don't care if my coat is flawless, if it's a little patchy. I want a full coat, but what I mean by patchy, you can see that my it's not 100% even. And that's because it only has one coat on it and I'm applying it over metal, so it has a little bit of slickness to it, but that's okay. And I am going around the handle. Uh, at this point, I haven't decided that I want to uh, do anything to the handles. Part of that is simply because it, if I'm gonna use the handle to hold it, that means that surface is gonna get a little more wear and um, I don't necessarily want to have a foiled surface uh, that might wear off even with a light top coat on it. I wanna keep that a little more durable. And mind you, Foil doesn't wear off with the right top coats, but these are decorative pieces, so I'm not planning to top coat them like it's gotta get through Armageddon. I just want a top coat on it so that the stuff stays on, looks pretty, and lasts for a long time. 
So, um, uh, if I wanted it to be super durable on the top, on the handle, I'd use a different top coat that I'll probably use. I'm gonna use something a little lighter weight, something that holds up really well, except for hard wear. All right, so we're gonna push this back over into the front. I'm gonna let it dry. I'm going to put my paint down here on the floor and put the lid on it before I kick it over because that's happened before on a live. Okay, so I have that done. Take another little sip of tea. I get a little dehydrated by the end of the day. So we're going to cover this one in our copper crackle. Now this is a V-mask foil. Hey Desiree, nice to see you here. Sweetie, I just sent off your prize, so you should have it. Uh, in three to seven days, depending on the post office, which um, we all know is very overworked right now. So if you're waiting on shipments from us, please be patient. We have no control over what the post office does. Um, so yelling at us doesn't make the packages move out of um, Bedford, Illinois any faster. <laughs> okay, so we're using a V-mask film. Now, it, V-masks are often mounted on this sort of hazy film, so this doesn't look like anything here, but it's gonna look really cool on the picture. So now I just gotta get this laid down and it's gonna be challenging to me because everything's challenging to me today. Oh my God. Are you watching? You all are watching. I know you're watching me like struggle with just getting this out. And now my, I got water on my hand. So now that wants to be a pain. Okay. So I didn't cut this quite as wide as I thought I had, but that's okay. So I've got this on the majority of it. Um, there may be wrinkles. There may be flaws. Um, I probably have a little bit of a seam right there just because it folded down hard. Uh, more than I wanted. Let me grab my scrub brush. And that's all right, because by the time I'm done, you won't notice that. Get that down there. Now you can see I'm, I'm working to burnish. And again, I like to rub my hands over it, A, because then I can feel where it needs to be kind of shoved in, but also the heat from my hand helps the transfer. And again, this these pictures, I got them at Target. You know, they're not they're not hard. You, if you walk into Target, those of you who are Target shoppers like I am, know that Target always has sort of an end cap area that has all kinds of weird, odd seasonal things or baby things all on like the three to five dollar range. And that's where I found this. I was walking by it looking for something else and all of a sudden the pictures were there. So I'm gonna make these and use them for window display. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna use them to hold paintbrushes here in the studio. Okay, that's very cool. And you can see, it's a very flawed, very broken finish. Uh, no, Terry, this is set coat. I'm sorry, if you missed what I was saying before, I had brushed a full coat of um, set coat, uh, sorry, of Artsyville foil, uh, foil adhesive like I have on this pumpkin. That's why it's glossy. Um, I let it set up for well over an hour. Um, and then we're releasing the foil onto our cured long enough pitcher. I'm sorry if I didn't make that clear. I'm looking for my other scrubber. There we go. My other, this, this scrubber is a little soft and it doesn't always do what I do. And I'm just gonna keep st sticking that pumpkin on everything that we're gonna deal with later. See, I'm getting a flawed result, 
because my paint is brushed on by hand, my adhesive is brushed on by hand. It's a flawed surface and I'm okay with this because we're gonna finish it off and you're never gonna know that was a flawed release. I'm okay with that. Let's get in here, get as much as foil released as I can. And I missed some spots with my adhesive too. I can, why isn't it sticking there? Because you didn't put adhesive there more. You thought you did, but you didn't. getting as good a release on this as I wanted and I'm going to lay it on user application failure um, because that's <laughs> I will tell you the honest truth 90% of the time it has nothing to do with the materials and everything to do with how they were applied so I got some flaws on this and it's part of it is the fact that it's galvanized aluminum and it's a little funky to work with so it's all right that I don't have this perfect because why? Why don't I worry if it's not perfect? I'm gonna show you why. Give me just a second. Because if it's not perfect, I come back in with a brush. That's not it, there it is. I come back in with my Artsy Veil Foil Adhesive and I'm going to do a second layer. Now, if you're making these to sell them, a uh, second layer means more time, means more material, and means more money. That's not a bad thing, but you have to work it into your pricing. Um, so I know that I've just created a finish now that is not finished in one pass, it's gonna need a second one. And I'm okay with that. For smaller items, that's not a huge cost factor. But if I was working on a really big project, um, yeah, I would be aware that that was gonna be an additional cost. You know, sometimes I get these and they come out flawlessly. Sometimes I do them and they come out a little uneven and it's really, honestly, it's me. Uneven application, I'm having a weird day. It's not the materials, it's me. So I'm just gonna put a little extra foil adhesive on here and I'm gonna roll this one up around one more time. I'm gonna make sure I got good enough foil adhesive all over the bottom. And we're gonna go put that one into my heat curing box, my hot box in the back. Um, my hot box is a hydroponic tent where I have a heater with a fan blowing into it so that I create a warmer room for forcing things to dry. Now this is, we're forcing this to dry because I'm doing a live. Don't do this normally, That's it. just don't. You're gonna have issues with your products. When I put stuff in a hot hot box like that, it's like putting it in a warm, extra warm room. It's not super hot. It's not like putting on a hair dryer on it and doing things like that, which become problematic because that then uh, heats up the top of something. So you've got a hardened surface over things, but then it's like a pudding 
So you've got a skin of hard stuff on the surface and everything else is underneath is wet. Whereas what I'm doing with a hot box is just raising the temperature of the whole area a little bit and that speeds drying all the way through. If you want to build a hot box, I have the directions. I will be happy to share them. It's a hydroponic tent, a heater, and a vent hose. But don't do it unless you produce a lot of stuff and you need to rush dry, speed up your drying. And really, if you're not familiar with what you're doing with paints and stuff, don't do it at all. Um, and I say that with all love because um, I understand what I'm doing chemically. If you're not familiar with the chemical stuff, don't do it. All right, so we're going to move on now that I've given you a little chemistry lesson. And by the way, if I... Um, don't see your questions. You know I go back. I answer them after the live, but I will try to look up and uh, do another uh, question and answer before I finish here today. And if I'm stumbling and eyeing, eyeing a lot, um, it's the end of the day for me too, and I've had a very busy day, so I'm just trying to keep all my words in order. All right, so this is a plastic pumpkin that I bought from, again, Target. It was cream color. I painted it with set coat black and then brushed on a layer of Artsyville foil adhesive. That's why it's nice and glossy now. And we're going to release our kiwi. Kiwi leopard. How fun is this going to be? Now, I have some foils, new foils coming in on Friday. I haven't said anything about them because we were waiting on them to be... Uh, they were back ordered from the manufacturer, so I was excited, but I didn't want to say anything. So we're going to have a bunch more crazy looking pumpkins that we're going to work on on Friday when I unbox the new foil. Okay. So let's take the leopard here and I'm just going to sort of work it into the crevices of the pumpkin. So the goal here is by the time I finish doing the other stuff, the uh, pitcher will be dry enough for me to put a second layer of foil on it. And then we can do the next step that I already have prepared. Yes, I actually have something prepared. I know, shocker. I get scared when I'm prepared too. And these little scrubbers, um, they're made by Scotch-Brite. Oh, sorry. These are little tiny, they're hard to find stiff scrub brushes. This one is super soft, but this one's a little stiffer because the bristles are shorter. Home Depot, little ones. They're great for furniture. They fit into uh, odd corners and stuff. I have not found a wholesale supplier for them. Otherwise, I'd be have carrying them on my website. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look how cool that is. All right, I have a little bit left to, to kind of put together here. Um, Halloween, I've always, always loved Halloween. Like, I was way more into it than anybody else in my family. Um, so, I am like a child as an adult. I'm like a child with Halloween. And I indulge my Halloween whims liberally. Because it makes me happy. My mother was the kind, when we were growing up, the old plastic costumes for a lot of years, then she was making them, then I started making my own costumes. Um, and then, but the, that was it. I mean, you know, our house, we had a bowl of candy to give out to trick-or-treaters, and we had a pumpkin on the door 
that my dad carved and we ate the pumpkin seeds, but that was it. I'm, I'm a little more obsessive <laughs> now. There's a lot of holiday decorating. And my son looks at the basement and goes, oh God, it's that time, isn't it? Not because he doesn't love the decorations, but he just hates bringing up all the boxes. And basically from now through January, all he does is haul boxes up and down the stairs for decorating. Okay, let's get into these little details at the bottom. So I gotta turn it towards me so I can see this, the parts that are uh, needing to be foiled. So do you all have like favorite Halloween stories from when you were kids? great parties or special costume or a particularly memorable Halloween. Um, when I was a kid, my mom didn't do it. I always thought she was a bit of a stick in the mud for not doing it, but okay. My mother's friends would go out trick-or-treating for cocktails. And they went to friends' houses, but, you know, they got all decked out, put on a costume, and would go from one friend's house to another friend's house and have cocktails. And it was hysterical because, you know, it was all of my parents' friends. Either they were doing the trick-or-treating or they were hosting it, so you, you never knew when you were um, walking into somebody's house if you were going to find... You know, your aunt, a couple of your aunts in there uh, having a couple drinks. And I don't mean my relative aunts. We, were, I grew up with a lot of, like, Aunt Betty, Aunt Barbara, Aunt this, Aunt that, Aunt somebody else, because they were that close to the family. So it was the, the what we, what I can only refer to as the adopted aunts. You go around trick-or-treating and, honest to God, sometimes... We've hit them in a couple houses. <laughs> and I'm not sure who was a, a little more messy by the end of the evening. My parents' friends for their cocktails or us for the sugar buzz. Okay, look how cute that is. This is so cute. Oh, Terry, you finally got around to your first foiling today and you love it. Isn't it awesome? I mean, look at this little pumpkin. So cute. Whoops, I'm, it's so cute, I'm throwing it. And quite frankly, the foil release on this is so good. Um, if I put glitter on it to seal up any of the sticky spots, there's not gonna be a whole lot that it seals up. So we're gonna set that aside. And there's another piece of foil to go into the bag. Now, you know we have these little wooden cutouts. This one is clearly a small skull, and these were designed based on the idea of the sugar skulls, you know. Sorry for my hand. Like the one I'm wearing up here. So last year, I did, I did a base plum color, glass bead gels, and rolled uh, the crock roller through it that I, you know, and I tinted the bead gel and stuff, but it was a little, little dull. So this year, we're going to do a little more play on um, Day of the Dead, Sugar Skull idea. Um, and we're going to do a little foil, a little stencil. And as you can see, I have my stack of my studio stencils right here. And I'm just getting out the one I want to use, which I know is in here somewhere. Here we go. So Day of the Dead images tend to have a lot of bright colors and a lot of flowers. So flower power, I think, is the perfect choice for this one. We're going to set it on our skull this way. 
And all these little dots that you see here, these are all registration marks. I'm going to turn this sideways and try to zoom in a little bit. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing better here. Okay, get my camera angle. So obviously this is a well-loved stencil. Um, <laughs> no, no shame in that. Uh, and we're going to start out with our Bailey's flower. I thought this would be super sharp. Got that. And let me I'm gonna cut this in half because it's a little big for what I need right now. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm, ta I'm paying attention because I have a little bit of exposed area on this edge here, and I have exposed area down here, so I don't want to accidentally lay the foil on uh, the exposed areas that's not being um, aided by a, a stencil being on it. Okay, let's get my fingers in here first and rub in get all the design. And now I just need to grab my stylus. stylus is buried in a bag. I just remembered that it's in the back of my car, so I'm not going to go digging for it. But what I do happen to have is a ballpoint pen that was given to me as a gift that has a little plastic cap on it, and that'll work just fine. And all I'm doing is using it to go around the edges of the stencil. Not because, not super you know, hard, not working on it that hard, but I want to make sure I get all my little details filled in and having something like a stylus or what the, like the pen I'm playing with right now helps get all of the little tiny lines and stuff that are in details of stencils um, pressed to the surface so they can release the foil into those details. make sure that down here I get these little dots because they are going to help me when I have to shift the stencil. I know you're in there, you little stinkers. Where are you? Okay, this pen doesn't work as well as many of the other tools that I've used, but it'll do for now. I really don't like this though. It's not working well. I got, I got another bag with more styluses in. I bought this goofy um, mandala kit online and it has these weird tools that have like the cleanup tool on one end and a stylus on the other. So all of a sudden I remembered I had a whole bunch more styluses than I thought I did. And really, I don't do this for anything other than really detailed small patterns because those disappear really easily when you're doing stuff like this. If you don't, if you don't have a tool that pushes the foil down into the opening of these small details on a stencil, you can lose part of the design, and that's really, you know, that's sad. We like our designs. We want them to stay. Okay, let's see if I missed anything over here. Did I miss anything here? down here. See? I knew I could forget something. It's not that hard. 
it really isn't to skip over something. Okay, so what are everybody's favorite seasonal and Halloween spooky movies? Because those are not necessarily the same things. They're autumnal, thanksgiving -y, you know, Paris in the fall kind of things, and then there are monster movies like, you know, um, Halloween and all the other ones that are a little scary, scarier. One of my favorite Halloween movies is the original Halloween. Um, I watch them all every year, but yeah, that one is scared the pants out of me as a child. And no, my parents didn't force me to watch it. I would sneak and watch stuff that I wasn't supposed to see. That's one of those kids who get up in the middle of the night to watch TV. Um, and once in a while my parents, because my parents do what I do now, which is fall asleep with the TV on. So every once in a while I would just sneak down from my bedroom uh, with my sister and go watch TV in their room. And then I'd fall asleep on the floor and they'd get up in the morning. I don't. I always thought I was going to be in trouble for it, but for some reason they found it to be the funniest thing. Of course, now as a parent, I would have been like, oh, that's so sweet. They're so cute. Okay. Get to place these things in here carefully so that everything matches up right. Looking at it funny. If I don't believe that matches, then I'll just go this way and do it. I don't know why I was moving it because it was already in place. I just needed to move the foil. Sometimes I do things that make my own life so much harder. And that was one of them. Let's see. some things around so that we get everything placed properly. There we go. I knew it wasn't lining up quite right. There we go. And a little touch of damp foil adhesive on that and it keeps sticking to my fingers so I think it's time. That's that's the gods telling me it's time to cut a little bit of a fresh piece of foil instead of trying to fuss with the piece that's got the adhesive on it. Alrighty. Oh, come on, I can't get my fingers working here. <laughs> Some days, just like the fingers say, mm, you know, it's after five o'clock, we're not doing anything anymore. All right, let's get in here. Little D 
detailed crevices. Just a little more. Got to get the one that's going to go there. Okay, the piece that's there. And then I need to check to see if there's anything that fits in that spot over there. right there. I just want to get all those little dots that were a little dark. And we have a little extra foil over them. There we go. All right, so that already looks pretty awesome, but I've got all that sticky background to deal with. So the next thing I have to do is give myself a background color, which I had chosen and now don't remember what it was I chose. So I figured this and then I figured something else out for the background. Let me see if I can see a roll foil around here that's gonna tell me something. Well, we could do hunter green. We could do the leopard. We could do whatever I can't find that's sitting somewhere else. I have well, I had all these wonderful ideas and I don't know where I put it, but I think the hunter green will look just terrific. I'll we'll keep those flowers well popped. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I actually I thought I may have decided on something I may actually not have. All right, so we're gonna put that down there, smooth it over the entire surface. And you, you can buy these wooden cutouts from us if you like them. We have pumpkins, acorns, maple leaves, other leaves, small sugar skulls, large sugar skulls, cats. And then we get into other seasonal stuff. So there's lots of choices. Pigs, chickens, all kinds of fun things. Okay, here we go. Yes, that's lovely. So now you can see that that pa pattern fully released on the surface. And it is a deep rich hunter green in the background. And look at how great that looks. And that is a little more true, interpreted though it is, a little more true to the sugar, true sugar skull idea versus last year's um, glass bead look. So I'm gonna set that aside. I'm probably gonna dust this with a little glitter, then I will top coat it with Aqua Guard. Um, all right, here's our next fun project. This one, you can tell, oh, well, you can't tell what that is. It's too far away, too close in. Sorry about that. I got to zoom it back out. Okay, so this is one of our pumpkin cutouts. Now, I have 
This is the one we, you saw me working on before. So I had done all the doodling around all the, uh, the stenciled shapes in here to pop it up and make it a little more fabulous than where it was at last year. But I still have, again, this whole other side. And I like to do both sides of things if I can because then I'm, I'm, I'm getting the best use out of it. I get options, I'll have moods. One year I'll want something to look one way, so another year I'll want it to look another way. So we're gonna do a little something different with this. I've just gotta set it aside for a minute. And we're gonna work with our Artsyville texture medium. And um, I've been foiling so much, I'm sure you all are confused. Like, wait, that's not foil. And this cup can't be used because it's got gooey stuff in it, but I have no idea what it is. Hang on, let me go grab a clean cup. Sorry folks, short arms, so it's not easy for me to reach on my shelves. And the first reaction everybody is, why don't you put it on a lower shelf? Well, everything would have to be on a low shelf. I'm not short, but I just don't have super long arms and legs. So my reach is not perfect. All right, so this is our Artsyville texture medium and I am at the tag end of a gallon here and I've let stuff dry and so I got to clean and I do this this happens it happens to everybody so I got to pull this chunk of hard dry stuff that was sitting on the sides out of my way and I left even left a stir stick in there I am so organized I just like to get all the old stuff out because I don't want to mix any hard, dry chunks. And most people's gallons do not look like this. I have a bad habit of doing things like walking away from an open gallon for half a day. Don't do what I do, be better. All right, so I've got, now I've got my product in here. And you can see there really isn't that much left in here. And I have <laughs> been very unkind to it. So I've got to put my my press and seal all the way back down to the surface. Put that over there. Get my messy lid out of the way. Don't waste that much product like I did. Be better than I am. That was nothing but waste and it was all nobody's fault but my own. So this is the last, like as you, as you saw, it's the last of what I had in that gallon, there's a little more there, but it's gotten pretty thick too um, because <laughs> it got exposed to air. So I'm gonna add a little water just to loosen this up. And this is what always happens. The water coats the outside of the plaster so it wants to spin like a ball in the middle of the cup. And so I'm not really stirring as much as I'm chopping because that breaks the plaster up and allows it the water to mix into it better. There we go, I'm gonna need some more. Now also understand when you add water to a product you're actually um, <laughs> speeding up its drying time. So I know once I've added this, the water is going to evaporate a lot faster than whatever acrylic resin binders are in here. <laughs> yeah, so I am gonna might have to work a little faster than I normally do, but you can see I'm finally getting it a little more liquid, a little creamier. And, you know, I could have done this off camera so y'all would think I was just perfect and knew exactly what I was doing all the time. And 
no, I'm human. I make messes and I make mistakes. I wanna make sure that you all see how to correct them. And I know it looks like I'm adding a lot of water, but what you might not see is when I stir, I get a squirt of water coming out from time to time because this is dense. And so I've lost about 50% of the water I put in by having it just go out of the container. There we go. Now I've made it probably a little more liquid than it would be normally, but that's okay. That was intentional. I want it that way because we're going to use a brush to apply it. And so a little more liquid actually helps. Now let's see, in all of these messes and piles of stuff, I brought brushes over. There it is. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna put this back down on here. And I'm gonna flip this paper over because it looked like there was a smudge of white stuff on there that I really don't want to get onto the other side after I did all that work. And I'm being careful with how I'm handling it because I obviously have stuff on my hands. Now it's on my apron. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna take a chip brush. And for this, you want the oldest chip brush you have old, bris brittle, stiff bristles, kind of got to work it a little bit, and we're going to brush. Now, if you're at all concerned, if you've done this before and you don't want to, if you're at all concerned that you might have stuff that shows up on the other side, press and seal. Press and seal's great for everything. Cover the other side with press and seal. It will keep this from getting soiled on the other side. Now I'm going with the and what would be considered natural kind of curves of the pumpkin. And I'm doing it on both sides so that the center one looks the most raised. I just gotta work my brush strokes until I get them exactly where I want them. Now, once this is dry, I can paint over it, I can stain over it, I can do all kinds of stuff. And, you know, don't ask me uh, what I'm doing next because I've got about six ideas going in my head. And so really it's whatever one is gonna be in the forefront once this is dry. but now I've created a really nice texture on here. And let's make sure I don't get anything on the other side that I don't want to deal with. If I want to now, I can also take a tool, I can take a, pa a, a palette knife, sorry, losing my words today. I can do 
a sculpted kind of stem right there. Let me see if I've got a palette knife right here. And my palette knife is also is probably where the other things I can't find with my denatured alcohol sprayer. But I do have this little uh, putty mixture, mixer, mixer. God, I'm really struggling with words today. Sorry about that. And I'm just going to take it. I don't want this perfect. I want it to look rough and coarse. If I wanted to, I could draw some veins into it because we the pumpkins have rid, hand, uh, pumpkin stems are ridged. I could come back, knock it down. I can make it nice and smooth if I want. right hand and get that edge because that wants to come all off or I can take my tool just come back in here and I could bring this down into the pumpkin like this let me take that up there Trust me, if I can do this with a tool that I just pulled at randomly out of my pile of stuff, so can you. Take my right hand. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit ambidextrous. I always have been. My grandmother was very, very ambidextrous. But back when she was a kid, they used to beat, beat the, basically beat the left-handedness out of you. Um, it's considered ungodly to be left-handed. And devil's work. And, you know, given that, that period, that's not a surprise that that's what was coming out of people's mouths. Okay, so I've created sort of a little stem up there. And that's gonna sit and it dry, and tomorrow I'm going to do some sort of staining, and I think what I'm gonna do is probably come back with another stencil, and we're gonna do more, more texture medium on here after this is dried and been stained with a stencil so we can do a raised stencil. That's, I think that's my, I think that's my ultimate goal. I may have to watch this again tomorrow just so I know what I said I was gonna do. But there we go. We're going to set that aside. Alrighty. I'm going to go back and get that um, pitcher that's in the hot box. It should be ready to go with another piece of foil. And then we're going to be done for the evening. Pictures back. There we go. Boy, am I gonna have a lot of cleanup to do when I finish up here tonight. I gotta get the plaster texture medium off of my fingers because um, every time I touch something, I'm gonna leave a little white thumbprint if I don't. All right, let's get back to that other foil. Where's our cracked copper? There we go. Let's 
try this one again. There we go, there's that. I cut it big enough this time. The foil adhesive has been curing for quite a while and also has been doing it in a heated space, so it sped the drying up on it a little bit. So let's hope it's cured enough and I'm not forcing it too much and I don't peel it all right back off the surface. Because that's what happens when you force it and it's not ready. And, you know, I've done it before. Y'all have seen me do it on a live, and if I do it again tonight, then I'm just gonna have to kick myself in the head and say, well, that was dumb. I knew better. Well, let's see if I really know better or not. I wanna make sure I give it a really, really good scrub so I get as much off on here as humanly possible. Way fewer wrinkles and bubbles this time, so hopefully that will work to my benefit. That's good. That's good. I like that. So I got a much better release. Yes, there's still flaws in it. That's fine. I know that's going to happen. I take that into account every time I do something. Why? Because I know that that's something I'm going to have to contend with. Foils are not perfect yet, people. You're going to have broken spots in your release. That's just what's going to happen. Now I'm going back over it with a little bit of this foil just to see if I can fill in any spots. But um, you can go in with another foil, a contrasting foil, to see what kind of result that gets you. You can rub the whole thing with glitter when you're done because that'll pick up any of the adhesive spots that are still exposed, which is one of my favorite ways to solve the issues with exposed sticky spots. piece of foil actually torn and stuck on there. <sighs> so I got most of the that covered, I know there's gonna be some sticky, so I'm gonna try playing with a little bit of Hunter on it, and release it in the spots that the other foil doesn't, didn't grab. Might get a little bit of Hunter on here, might get a lot of bit of Hunter on here, we're gonna find out. And I'm going in this direction because this is also the direction I brushed on the foil adhesive and the paint. And I actually am getting some really nice release with the Hunter into some of the details where the coppers, the cracked copper didn't grab 100%. off 
in there. So you see now, it looks like it has green veins. There's a little piece of white stuff stuck on there for my hand. So I like that. I'm very pleased with how that looks. I'm going to put that down at the edge here. I'm going to go turn it this direction so I can get some up into the bottom of the picture. So already this is cute as can be. This would make tie a little raffia or a little ribbon around it, top coat it, seal it up, and you've got a great picture for uh, decorative arrangements like flowers or, you know, anything of that nature. But we're going to add just a little extra something to it. On my Cricut Maker, I cut out the words Autumn Harvest. And I did measure it so it goes completely around with uh, room to spare. So now what I'm doing here is looking to see how to center this the best. Now the nice thing is that this piece doesn't actually have um, any angle to it. It's a straight up and down cylinder. The most complicated part is right here. So lining it up shouldn't be an issue for me. But I did want to, I don't want to put something there. I need a little something just to mark right there. Maybe I'll just do it with my finger. Yeah, that'll work. So I just put a little scuff in my own foil so that I can lay that down correctly. And that's not yet burnished to this surface hard enough. I'm just rolling back my lettering. And as you can see, oops, I missed a little one right there. Where's my tweezers? I missed the center of this letter. Get it popped out. There we go. And I'm rolling it back parallel to the surface because that reduces surface tension for me to apply it and it allows this to stick on the backing better. All right, so I did have this figured out. All right, let's get that all. Let's not have it stick to my fingers. There's going to be, there's a little buckle right there. So I'm gonna probably have to go in and adjust that lettering a little bit by hand. And I have a little bit that ran off the edge here. So I'm gonna have to trim that with an X-Acto knife. Because even when I measure this stuff really carefully, um, you know, I'm flawed, I'm human. I make, make boo-boos. Now, if you don't like what happens to your foiled surface when you put um, the transfer sheets on it, because for some foils it can make it a little dull, top coat it first. I'm not doing that specifically because once I do this, I'm gonna sprinkle glitter on it. So I want to have the adhesive that um, is still sticky on here be available to me to put the glitter on. I could have made this a little smaller. And see, that's what I didn't want to have happen. That's trying to pull some of the foil off right there all the way down. And we're going to avoid that. And I pull my tapes, so you can see I'm pulling, I pull my tapes from all kinds of directions because um, it relieves tension on the surface. But you can see right here, I'm having pull up. Why? Because I have really forced this surface. So 
I'm telling you right now, when you force a surface, you can have issues. All right. And all I'm really gonna do to fix that is I'm gonna put a little bit of foil adhesive right there and right there. Touch it in with, probably just touch it in with my finger. I'll release some foil over it and then glitter the tar out of it. And this is one of these things that's are gonna show you why we give you dry times on materials. Why? Because I really pushed this and it caused me to have a couple of places where the paint and the foil tore back. But I'll fix this. And meanwhile, look at how cute that is. Autumn harvest. Pull that down. I'm gonna fix that and we're gonna be done. All right, I'll come back and touch that up in the morning. I think you all have seen enough of me tonight. God knows I've seen enough of myself. And I have loads of other projects. So I'm going to take my Day of the Dead headband and take my little body home and see my family. But I actually, believe it or not, besides cleaning up, I still have a lot more work to do. All right, so thank you all for joining me. Thanks for spending the evening here. Please use that sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle button. It's that little arrow that's right down in here. So please use that. We have a great contest coming up at the end of the month where you all can get yourself a free Luster Stone Ice Sample Pack Collection because we had a shipping snafu and I ended up with a second one. So with Wofex permission, we are going to turn that into a contest. All right, everybody, have a great night. Great to have you here. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.